Hi, my name is Christopher Malcolm. I'm a Los Angeles-based lifestyle, fitness, and activewear photographer. And I'd like to talk to you today about a project I just shot called 11 Women. I believe art, like life, is about pushing yourself, testing your boundaries. And every time you get to one level, it's your duty to uh, take it a little bit farther, then a little bit farther, and a little bit farther, just to see how far you can really go. In many ways, it's like being an elite athlete without the athletic ability. The reason why so much of my work focuses on athletes, active wear, fitness, is because I think that um, Physical exertion is a metaphor for larger society. Uh, I think everybody wants something out of this life. Everybody wants to get somewhere. Everybody has a dream. For some, that dream is to win a World Cup. For others, that dream is to get a promotion, graduate high school, or just get the, the right job to be able to support your family. I believe it's my role to create the art that helps people envision themselves achieving their dreams. And I've been fortunate enough to be called upon by some of the biggest brands on earth to help tell their stories. But just like any elite athlete, you don't get there by resting on your laurels. You have to keep pushing yourself to get better. You have to try new things and develop new capacities. Well, the story that most people know, or that most people should know, is that of Michael Jordan. So Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player to ever live, was actually cut from his high school basketball team. But uh, what most people don't know is that the very next morning after he was cut, he was in the gym. 4 o'clock in the morning, putting in the work, trying to get better. And every day after that, through high school, college, and a Hall of Fame NBA career, he kept the same work ethic. Even once he was confirmed to be the best, he was still putting in work to get even th that much better. Now, let's be clear. I am not calling myself the Michael Jordan of photography. That, my head is not quite that big. But the idea of putting in the extra work and trying to always get better and improve yourself is something that I always learned from him and something that um, I try to put into practice every day. You know, it's like going to the gym, right? Like if you go to the gym and you're just super excited that you can lift a 45 pound weight, uh, that's great and that's and it's, and it's terrific. But if time goes on and you continue to only lift 45 pounds, eventually your gains are going to, to plateau. You're gonna, not gonna, your muscles not no longer gonna develop, might even, even recede. If you want to keep getting better, what you need to do is you need to keep adding more weight. You need to keep um, getting better. You need to keep pushing yourself harder and harder and harder. And I, as a photographer, I kind of feel like it's the same way. You know, your creativity itself is a muscle. You know, if you want to get better as a photographer, you need to lift more weight. You need to keep challenging yourself. You need to keep pushing yourself um, to develop new techniques, to see the world in a different way. Uh, and that's really the only way that you're going to get the benefit and you're going to improve as, a, as an artist and eventually be able to deliver a better product to your clients. The way I exercise, so to speak, is by creating self-assignments. The objective of any shoot is to create great art. But beyond that, in a personal shoot situation, you're able to really expand on your own knowledge and become a better photographer and a better artist. It's an opportunity to push more weight. It's an opportunity to grow your creative muscles. Recently, I completed a project called 11 Women, which is, well, it's kind of what it sounds like. The objective was pretty simple, which is to shoot 11 different standalone series with 11 different subjects in one studio. Now, the idea of shooting 11 subjects is not particularly daunting. I've done that multiple times before. But again, in order to, um, to up the weight, uh, I added a couple different restrictions. And one thing you quickly learn as a professional photographer is that you don't always have all the resources in the world, nor do you always have all the time in the world. If you have to wait for ideal conditions to do your shoot, you might be waiting for a very long time. But as a professional, it's my job to be able to deliver my clients anytime in any situation, no matter what goes right or what goes wrong. But how do you deliver on game day? Well, it starts with preparation. So in this case, I decided to shoot 11 subjects in 22 hours. Again, that's still two hours per subject, not too bad. 
except hair and makeup. So that's really maybe more like an hour per subject. Eh, not, still not too bad. Let's take it up a notch. I am a glutton for punishment. So then I decided to set a goal to shoot uh, five different setups for each subject. Now things are getting a little bit more interesting. Now I've got to get through, uh, in two hours, I've got to get through hair and makeup, five wardrobe changes, and possibly five lighting changes. Definitely five lighting changes. Because objective number three was, uh, was the most fun of them all, which is I could not use any lighting techniques I'd ever used before which sounds doable, except that I've been a professional photographer for 15 years and finding something I've never done before is eh, kind of difficult. Let's take it a step further. Now, within each shoot, I can't repeat myself. So now, even going into say shoot one, I can't do anything I've done over the last 15 years. By shoot eight, nine, now I can't do anything that I've done in the last 15 years plus anything that I've done in the previous eight shoots. So needless to say, it was definitely a strain on the creative muscle trying to figure out what I wanted to do and trying to figure out um, how to keep making these things different, how to keep making things interesting and original. Fortunately, in this situation, uh, having such a diverse set of, uh, of models really helped me out because you know I think my job as a photographer is really primarily to connect with the talent and to use whatever it is that the talent brings to the table to help tell the client's story. One of my strongest skill sets as a photographer is being able to kind of immediately establish rapport with my talent, immediately identify what it is that makes them special, and immediately come up with a creative plan for how to harness that and point in a direction, in, in such a direction that it helps tell the client's story. You know, human beings are not monoliths. You know, women come in all shapes, sizes, and personalities. So my idea is to try to figure out what it is that they do best and um, figure out how we can best use that to serve the project or serve a client. It was a long shoot, but it was definitely worth it. Um, you know, one of the analogies I always use is like, uh, when I was in high school, I played basketball. Uh, and when you play basketball, you get fouled, you get to shoot free throws. Now free throws, are like the easiest shot in basketball. They, nobody's playing defense and you don't have to jump. You just stand there and, and, and shoot. But to make things more difficult, what my coach would do, my high school basketball coach, is he would make us run suicides or wind sprints, basically, before we practice our free throws. So you're not just relaxed, you're actually exhausted by the time you get up there and then you, you, you practice your free throws. The idea being that if you can hit them when you're dog tired, you ought to definitely be able to hit them when you're refreshed and, and alert and doing well, right? In other words, you, you practice your skill in the worst set of conditions. Um, and so that by the time you get to the best set of conditions, it's easy as pie. Well, I feel the same way about, you know, training yourself in photography. And if you're used to everything being cushy and handed to you, then you're going to be sorely disappointed, you know, and you're going to have some let down clients. And since my job is to never let my clients down, I have to practice in various different situations to make sure that I'm prepared. You know, it's like a concert pianist, you know, getting ready to play Carnegie Hall, right? Like, you don't just hang out all years on the couch eating Doritos, going on vacation, and then just stumble into Carnegie Hall and play a masterpiece, right? You have to actually practice that. You have to put in the effort. Uh, and then when game time comes, you're ready. So in this case, you know, you know, what, what I try to do with my personal shoots is prepare myself in such a way that um, when I do get on, when I'm shooting with live ammunition, when I'm working for a client, um, you know, I've prepared myself in less than ideal situations so that when ideal situations roll along, I'm good to go. The job one of any creative project for me is, is always simple, which is, um, it's, an easy, it's an easy answer, which is I want to create great art. Uh, and I think we've done that, and I, I couldn't be happier. Hi, my name is Christopher Malcolm. I'm a Los Angeles-based lifestyle, fitness, and activewear photographer. Thanks for watching. I learned a lot during the shoot, like not to book a studio in the middle of a heat wave that doesn't have an air conditioning. That that wasn't that wasn't a good idea.